in the name of Jesus Christ. A woman was at the verge of total collapse when he ran to meet a prophet. He said, My husband, a prophet, is dead. And the creditors have come to take my two sons away. And it's interesting, the prophet said, What do you have in your house? That means no matter the questions about your life, there is a solution within. As insurmountable as that mountain appeared, the prophet said, There is something in your house that's able to deal with it. There is something within you that holds the answer to that question. You have what it takes to be free. You have all it takes to be full. You have all it takes to excel. He said, what hast thou in thy house? There are many things we carry, but we don't know the worth of what they are. We don't know what they are worth, so they can't deliver their worth to us. He said, what hast thou in thy house? I'd like you to lift up your hands and ask the Lord, open my eyes tonight. Help me to see what things are within me. What has thou in thy house? Lord, open my eyes to see what it is that are placed within me that provides an answer. In Jesus' precious name. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? And what hast thou in thy house? Second Kings chapter 4 verse 2 What hast thou in thy house? Is so, such a deplorable situation, but you have the answer within your reach. Tonight, you are reaching out for that answer. Please, you may be seated. I'll be sharing tonight on the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. From the word of God, it's clear that every destiny is at the mercy of the tongue. Every destiny is at the mercy of the tongue. In my Bible, I hope it's in your own too. I'm told life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. That means destiny is at the mercy of the tongue. Life and death are at the power of the tongue. It's at the power of the tongue. Life and death. 
life and death. Life and death. So the tongue can determine how well you live. Or otherwise. They were about getting to Canaan. And at Kadesh Barnea, 12 spies were sent to spy out the land. And they came back and said, we be not able to enter. The people are too strong for us. We saw the land is a land flowing with milk and honey. But the land eats up people. We can't take it. And God spoke out. He said, as you have spoken in my ears, even so will I do unto you. So their destiny was determined by their tongue. God has been taking us through an adventure on the subject of perfection. Just to say it is impossible. And then you find yourself a permanent victim of imperfection. God was the one who said, I'm taking you to Canaan. But their mouth won't let them enter. God is the one who said the price is paid for your sins and my sins. But it will require our mouth to enter into our inheritance of righteousness in him. The tongue. In fact, the Bible said anyone who does not know how to use his tongue, he said that man's religion is vain. Vain means zero. Nothing to show. It's so important. They couldn't enter the land because their tongue won't let them enter. So if you must enter, then your tongue will be the one to determine whether you do enter or not. We cannot enter, they said. And Jesus said, well, God said, you have said it, and that's exactly what I will do for you. You will not enter. How many are determined to enter this Canaan? You want to enter this heaven of rest. You want to enter the kingdom of perfection. Come and say, I must enter. I must enter. In Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Let's start from verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmuring of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as he have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and know that to a number of you according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Now look at verse 28. As truly as I live, said the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. That means your tongue is what determines what God does with you. Truly as I live. As you have spoken in my ears, even so will I do unto you. So your destiny and my destiny is at the mercy of my tongue. It's so important. It's so vital. Jesus was speaking here in Luke 21. And he made one of those most profound statements. He was talking about the challenges of the end time. And he said, this has been ordained to turn to you for a testimony. I don't know what challenges you are facing right now. But God said that it has been programmed to turn to you for a testimony. Yeah. That is, very shortly you will stand and be able to say... Be ye followers of me, even as I follow Christ. 
He said, it shall turn to you for a testimony. And he gave them one weapon that would be used to make it happen. Now, look at it in uh, uh, Luke 21 and verse 12. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought, brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And verse 13 says what? And it shall what? Turn to you for a testimony. Set to it, therefore, in your heart, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. Verse 15 together, let's read. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. I am going to give you a mouth and a wisdom which will turn the table against your enemy and the situations are turned into your testimony he said and this shall turn unto your testimony it shall turn unto your testimony because i will give unto you a mouth and wisdom that none of your adversaries can resist nor can say i will give you a mouth and wisdom that none of your adversaries can resist nor can say so for situations to turn to you for a testimony you need to understand what has been given you your mouth has been given you not just for eating and drinking your mouth has been given you as a weapon of war against all your adversaries i will give unto you a mouth and when you let my wisdom flow through that mouth none of your adversaries can, can gain say or resist it so you have a mouth gift it is a gift of destiny it determines where your life is heading for no one here will end up in a crash in the name of jesus christ i will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist come and say i have a mouth gift from my father who is in heaven as a weapon of war against all my adversaries in the journey of life i have a mouth gift i'm going to put my mouth to work so i can put my enemies off and lay hold on my testimony he said and he shall turn to you for a testimony i'd like you to look at any challenge in your life and look at that challenge in the face you shall turn to me for a testimony i know you shall turn to me for a testimony i engage my mouth as a weapon of war against you you shall turn to me for a testimony i i command that you turn to me for a testimony any challenge in character any challenge in behavior i'd like you to say it with your mouth i know you shall turn to me for a testimony any mark of the devil harassing your destiny in any way i know you shall turn to me for a testimony i know you shall turn to me for a testimony i know you shall turn to me for a testimony in Jesus precious name Paul made a very profound statement and it's the age-long strategy of the devil he wants to make you feel that the solutions prescribed in the Word of God is too simple to be true he wants to make you see that you know he told them in the garden of eden how can eating ordinary fruit kill you that's you are not a dummy you should know better taste it a little do you feel like dying eat it now now see the bible said concerning satan that the serpent was the most subtle of all the animals which the lord god made you remember that in genesis chapter 3 
he was the most what? Subtle. He was the most subtle of all the animals that the Lord God made. Paul was writing in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. He said, I fear, lest by any means, as Satan beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the gospel. Satan is constantly fighting the simplicity of the gospel. How can this thing be what will control your life? How can your tongue, are you a dummy? Your tongue can't be that powerful. How? It's only a biological organ. What is it? It's nothing. It. Paul said, I fear, lest by enemies as Satan be guided if through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the gospel. If God says life and death are in the power of the tongue, then life and death are in the power of the tongue. If God said, I give unto you a mouth and wisdom that none of your adversary can resist nor gain say, that's what it is. You can use your tongue to trap your enemy. Amen. It's so important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, Paul said, we are not unaware of the devil's devices, lest he should gain advantage over us. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 11, he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and put on the whole armor of God, that may be able to withstand in the evil day, to stand against the wise of the devil, the tricks, the schemes, so you can deal with it if you know that the devil is a schemer. And nothing can be done against the truth but for the truth. I'd like you to understand this, that there is nothing that belongs to you in God that will be real without the use of your mouth. Only what you declare can be delivered. What you cannot proclaim, you cannot claim. You proclaim it to claim it. You declare it for God to deliver it. Satan knows that. So he keeps as many as will allow him down. Constantly saying what is not there. And refusing to say what is available to them. The truth is this. Jesus died and rose again to qualify you and I for his righteousness. So by his death and resurrection, I have legal right to his righteousness to be able to live like him. He died to reproduce himself in me. Except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But when he dies, he brings forth much fruit after his order. So Jesus died to reproduce himself in you and in me. Can I hear your amen? amen? And when I begin to declare it, he is committed to make it become a reality. This is so important. Say with me, Jesus died to reproduce his life in me. Jesus died to make me duplicate his personality. Jesus died to reproduce his character in me. Jesus died so I won't have to die again. Now that's very important. And Satan knows that the more you declare these verdicts of the truth, the more God is committed to perform. This is so important. Your tongue and my tongue, they are very vital in determining our destiny in God. Very vital. In Psalm 81, and we start to read from verse 10 to 14. Psalm 81 and verse 10 
to 14. If God says, be ye perfect, everything to make you and I perfect is already loaded in us. So all we need to do is to activate them. And the tongue is one of those vital covenant avenues through which you activate your possessions in Christ. Now Psalm 1 verse 10. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people will not hearken to my voice and Israel will none of me. Verse 12. So I gave them up unto their own heart lost and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me and Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turn my hand against what? The adversaries. So God is waiting on you and me to open our mouth wide. The louder you shout it, the freer you become. Open your mouth wide and I am going to fill it. But my people said, no, we are not that primitive, we are not that naive. This is a modern day, you have to be sure what you are saying. So they will not do what I ask them to do. So I gave them over to their own loss and their hard desires. Oh, that they had happened to me, I should soon have subdued their enemies under them and turn my hand against the adversaries. Whatever enemy of your destiny remains, as you open your mouth wide, I see God turning his hand against your adversaries. Every deadly habit See hanging around your destiny as you open your mouth wide, declaring the righteousness of God, they shall lose their grip of your life. He said, Oh, that they had hearkened unto me, I should soon have subdued their enemies under them and turn my hand against the adversary. The remaining two days is more than enough to walk up and down in the night season and begin to declare the righteousness of God upon your life and causing everything that is mocking you. And the Bible said, And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Who shall condemn? Who shall condemn? Who shall condemn? He said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. No matter where it's coming from. The power of the prince of the air. Rulers of this wicked world. No matter where the remote are coming from. God was said, when you declare it, you commit God to perform it. So there's going to be amazing deliverances in the name of Jesus Christ. This is very important. This is very vital. He said, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Come on, say, I'm moving. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Now, Jesus went towards a fig tree. We have that story in Mark chapter 11. And beginning from verse 20. Or all the way from 14. He went to see whether I could find some fruits on it. And he found none. And Jesus turned back and said, No one eat fruit of thee forever. So the following morning they were passing by the road the same way. And Peter said, The fig tree which thou causes is withered. And Jesus said, Have faith in God. For so I shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. I shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that we say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. So you don't pray for mountains. You make declarations against mountains. Jesus caused the fig tree 
And he said, if you cause any mountain like that, and shall not doubt in your heart, it shall be so. Hear this. Whatever is mocking your destiny in any form is due for a cause tonight. Whatever you cause before this month, month is over is cost forever in your life. The creator went to the tree and could not find fruits. I don't know what areas of your life are fruitless. Mocking your destiny in Christ. It's time to confront them. And begin to curse them in the name of the Lord. And everything mocking you must give way to testimony this month. He says, you shall have whatsoever, he says. Come and say, whatsoever. So, whatsoever adversity you cause, you shall have them cost. Whatever habit you cause, you will never see them rear their head again. Every destiny is at the mercy of the tongue. Every destiny. Isaiah 54, beginning from verse 14. And you see the tie of this uh, to your righteousness in Christ. Isaiah 54 and verse 14. In righteousness shall thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Now see, this one clearly shows that unrighteousness is an oppression. Is what? Unrighteousness is what? An oppression. He said, in righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shall be far from oppression. In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shall be far from oppression. Now look at what he says in verse 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bled the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the sons of, of the of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So you have to be active in condemning every tongue that rise up against you in judgment. That is the only way to put on your righteousness in Christ. You don't watch it. You war against it. So tonight go and declare war. Every habit that is about tearing your family apart, go and declare war against it. Every habit that is about sending you off your business, go and declare war against it. Every habit that is blocking your access to your heaven of rest with Christ in eternity, go and declare war against it. He said, in righteousness shall thou be established, thou shall be far from oppression. Every tongue that is against your destiny, you must rise to condemn it. This is your heritage as a servant of the law. And that is your only way to be filled with his righteousness. It's not just for eating and drinking. Your mouth is a weapon of war to secure your destiny. Now what is it that makes the words of your mouth that powerful? Number one, the words of your mouth
is considered a seed. Come and say seed. Is considered a seed. In the parable of the sower, in Luke chapter 8 verse 11, Jesus said, The seed is the word of God. And you are created in the image of God. And as the Father sent Jesus, so he sent you. So if God's word is a seed, then your word and my word is a seed. And why the earth minute, whatever a man sows, what? That also shall he reap. Whatever a man sows. So the words of your mouth is a seed. When you speak it, it's planted. And the harvest is sure. That's what makes your tongue a powerful tool in the journey of destiny. Every word spoken is a seed sown. And while the earth remaineth, whatever a man sows, that also he shall reap. So when you begin to declare words of righteousness, you are sowing seeds of righteousness. You begin to reap them. Does somebody hear what I'm saying? That's very important. Say with me, the words of my mouth is reckoned with as a seed. When it's spoken, it's a seed sown, and the harvest is sure. Therefore, from my soul, I will not be tired of declaring the righteousness of God in my life. I shall not be tired of declaring the provision of consecration, of sanctification that I have in Christ. Amen. Number two, the words of your mouth, they are reckoned with as commands for the angels. You remember we are told in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 that angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us who shall be here of salvation. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6, The Bible says, Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Neither say thou before an angel, it was an error. For why should God be angry with you and destroy the works of thy hand? Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 6. Very interesting. Because most of the battles with unrighteousness they are machinated by satanic hosts angels of darkness come on say angels of darkness they call them the prince of the power of the air and so you need angels of light to confront them and to have the angels of light you must turn them on with the word of life so when you speak words of death you incapacitate the angels. They can't function. And so the angels of darkness begin to have their way. That's why he said, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Chapter 6. I mean chapter 5 of Ecclesiastes verse 6. Suffer not thy mouth. So your mouth is the beginning of sin. Suffer not thy mouth. What your mouth allows, is what determines how far the devil goes. Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Now, and he said here, he said, Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands? That means every word you speak, is a command to the angelic world, negative or positive. Angels can help you convert your statements. They operate with them verbatim. When you say, I cannot be sick, and you don't doubt in your mouth, you have compared the angels to bring it to pass. When you say, enough is enough with this habit, because Jesus set me free. The same day he saved my soul, you are giving a command to the angels 
to take position and bring about the fulfillment of that word. Now, every form of filthiness has satanic input. And satanic input is in form of his own host who are angels of darkness. And so to get them down, you engage the angels of light. And to engage the angels of light, you speak the words of life. You speak for the word of life and it turns on the angels of light. And they bring down the angels of darkness. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought. But prevailed not. So there's an angelic conflict house up here. There's an angelic conflict here. Now something interesting here in Zechariah chapter 3. The words of your mouth, they are so powerful, they determine how the angels operate. And we need angelic intervention. After Jesus was tempted, the Bible says, angels came and ministered to him. The angels were there. Hello. As he was speaking those words, the angels were at attention. To see we say no to it is written. So when you come out with it is written, angels get on duty. When you come out with the appropriate it is written, angels take position to fight your war. Now look at it. Chapter 3 of Zechariah. Verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. Standing before what? the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Hello? I'm sure you all are aware that every one of us has a guardian angel. Do you agree with that? You should read the book putting your angels to work. Every one of us has a guardian angel. Every one of us. When Peter came out of the prison, and knocked on the door, and Rhoda told them that Peter was not in the same. No, it was this angel. The early church was so conversant with the angelic ministry. But now we've used a lot of psychology, a lot of philosophy to be clouded. But it's real anyway. Now, and the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now look at verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel, helpless. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Now, can you see angelic conflict? He was standing before the angel and Satan was standing to resist him. And he resisted him and put a, you know, a filthy garment on him. And God stopped him and told the angel that stand up, stood about, he said, take off that filthy garment from him. So, now, angels of darkness forced it on him. Angels of light took it off him. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Whatever angels of darkness has forced on you, angels of light, you force them out of you. So every time you come out with it is written, angels are set on attention. Ready for battle. In Psalm 103, verse 20. He said, Bless the Lord, you his angels, that excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of his word. So when you speak forth his word, angels take it as an order that may be carried out. Can I hear your amen? As anointed as Jesus was, he needed angelic ministry. Angels came and ministered unto him. Friends, it's time to mind what you say. 
You want to see the determines what to see ultimately. So without your tongue, your perfection is not in view. Finally, the words of your mouth commit the integrity of God. It commits what? The integrity of God. Isaiah 34 and verse 24 beginning. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 24 to 26. Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer, and you that formed thee from the rain, and the Lord that maketh all things, that setteth for the heavens in him, and spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that proceeded the tokens of liars, of the liars, and maketh the diners mad, and turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge finish. Verse 26, that confounded what? The word of my servant, and performed the counsel of my messengers, that said to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah, you shall be built. And I will raise up the decayed place in Jerusalem that confirmed the words of my servant. God is committed to confirm whatsoever we confess. What we confess, God's integrity commits him to confirm it. And he shall have whatsoever he says. God is committed. They went forth and preaching everywhere. God was working with them, confirming the war. With signs following, he was confirming, confirming the war. Not just speaking it, but speaking it boldly. Acts chapter 13 and verse 3. Long time ago, they speaking boldly in the Lord. Acts 13, 3. We gave witness to the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by the earth. Whatever is called impossible, a sign is the solution. And when we declare boldly, God is permitted to confirm with a sign. I don't know what it is, but this month must not pass without that thing passing in our life. Whatever is capable of stopping your access to heaven, must not step out of this month with you. Can I hear you loud, Amen? Yeah. So these two days are days of destiny. Days of what? These two days are days of destiny. If you feel like you can come down to church tomorrow night and have a wonderful time in God's presence by yourself, walk around the premises and begin to declare. Lord, take over against all satanic hosts that are using against thee. Is this not a branch plucked out of fire? I prepare this mouth from the foundation of the world. We want to, to, to promote this destiny with wickedness. And God arose. The same way God is going to arise for everyone. So what to say is a seed soon. What you say is an, a command to the angelic world. And what you say commits God to confirm. That's what makes your tongue such a powerful tool in the journey of destiny. Rest to your feet. So I'm exactly here tonight. Can I give Jesus a big, big hand? This year has come. This year has come. Hallelujah. This year has come. Glory to the Lamb! This year has come! Glory to the Lamb of God! This year has come! This year has come! This year has come! Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb! We praise you all! Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb! Amen! Whatever does not cross over the month of May into the month of June in your life, begin to cross them now. Come on. Begin to cross them now. Every attitude, every habit, every behavior that must not cross into the next month.
of your life, but get the past them now. One of the greatest keys tonight, which you can keep on declaring forever, is that Jesus died to reproduce himself in me. Amen? <laughs> and because he lived, I shall live also. Jesus died to reproduce himself in me. So if you can ask him, hold me back to ransom. Satan, you cannot trap my destiny. Because Jesus died to reproduce himself in me. He died to reproduce himself in me. He died to make me the righteousness of God in me. Jesus died to reproduce himself in me. He died to reproduce his character in me. He died to reproduce his integrity. that in your heart as you take the communion tonight, you are going to see that vibrant force that is actively reproducing the nature of God in you. Whatever is anti-Christ in your system, you will be followed up in this here tonight. In Jesus' precious name, my Father, thank you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, confirm this verdict tonight that by this communion you will boldly reproduce yourself and every one of us partaking of this today in Jesus' name. Whatever aspect of our life we are yet to fill up by this communion, fill such areas up in the name of Jesus. You die to reproduce yourself in us. Also tonight, reproduce your health in everyone. Reproduce your mental fullness in everyone. Reproduce your righteousness in everyone. Reproduce your purity in everyone. Reproduce your happiness in everyone. Reproduce your character in everyone. Reproduce your habit in everyone. In the name of Jesus. And every angelic interference contrary to this declaration will 
them in the name of Jesus. And behold, uh, the angel of darkness will overcome them by the power of the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. This is a communion with a difference. So let it approach it prophetically. Approach the table tonight prophetically. Approach with the sense of prophecy that something is being produced in me now. Christ has been produced in you. And from today, begin to live by the produced life. Because the fullness of the Godhead bodily resides in Christ, and Christ now bodily resides in me, so the fullness of the Godhead bodily resides in your body. Lord, thank you because from today your character shall be reproduced in us. Your purity shall be reproduced in us. Your holiness shall be reproduced in us. Your humility shall be reproduced in us. Your intelligence has been produced in us. Your health has been produced in us. Blessed.